Hello, powerful nonsenses. Hello. Here for a new episode. Yes. One two zero. One twenty. One twenty. Mate, we're nearly quarter of the way through to two hundred episodes. It's decent. Another big milestone. Yeah, that's no, good. <sighs> it's flying by, flying by. Um, bringing you some tough love today. It's got to be done. Some unfortunately. tough, tough love. Yes. Today we're talking about the that's life fallacy. Mm-hmm. Which is probably like a bit of a... Yeah, it is that song. Is that Sinatra? That's life. Yeah, is that that's Sinatra? That's what all the people say. Something like that. I feel like that's Sinatra. Probably. We probably should know because that's we a really popular know. song, isn't it? I feel yeah. really uncultured right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're talking about, about that and this, the whole statement of, oh, well, it's just life. Yeah. Which a lot of people throw out there all the time. A lot of people throw out there. And so we're basically going to break down what type of people <laughs> throw that out in the first place mm-hmm. and actually why it's not true and why you do have control over your life. Mm-hmm. And actually, yeah, you just need to empower yourself. Mm-hmm. There's a little thing on the uh, Art of Trauma episode that I referenced last episode. Yeah. Which was the, uh, if, you're, if you're so smart, why aren't you happy episode. And he was basically saying, and I love this, I think it's a good kind of starting point as well. He said that if you... Basically, there's no empirical evidence to say whether or not life is innately fair, unfair, or neutral, right? Yeah. Because anybody that tells that believes life is unfair can give you loads of evidence to say why. If someone says, well, it's kind of doesn't make a difference, it, life doesn't really think about you... Um, it's kind of neutral. Someone can provide plenty of evidence for that. And also anyone that thinks, oh, you know, life is all about giving you opportunities, the universe giving you opportunities, providing for you, uh, any, any religious people and things like that that say, oh, you know, God's got a plan or whatever. Um, they can provide empirical evidence as to why. Mm-hmm. So seeing as scientifically speaking, there's no evidence to suggest one way or the other you may as well just have the positivity and think, do you know what? Life is all about the opportunities. Yeah, and we even created like a T-shirt the other day and I think it's so fitting. It's like the idea that you get to like choose your lens. Mm -hmm. It's this idea that ultimately, like you say there, it's all about perspective. It's what perspective have you taken? And I think the the thing with the people who start going on about, oh, well, that's just life. I think what's happened is they've been hit so many times by the repeat repetitions of the Mm -hmm. thing that they think happens over and over maybe they didn't get the job over and over keep getting rejected Mm -hmm. or they can't find a partner or whatever else it might be and I think what happens is obviously as humans if something happens over and over again we kind of build it into our our model of thinking and then suddenly we think well actually yeah that is life every time I try this I fall on my ass Mm -hmm. and I think what people need to be aware of is that actually the brain is so fluid Right. And that we actually can question, okay, I have got stuck in that pattern. And yes, I did fail a hundred times. And maybe mm-hmm. I've come out of two divorces or whatever else it might be. But things can always get better. And I think uh-huh. the, the whole like millennial, the entrepreneurial mindset, I think, is to have a sort of unwavering optimism. You've always got, as a human, to strive to keep going on. You've got to be able to feel optimistic about what's to come. And I think as soon as you kind of get into that, oh, well, that's life um, mindset, I think suddenly you shut yourself off from the world. Right. There's no opportunities, there's no hope, there's, it's very like degrading, I think it's disempowering. And I think, yeah, we just really want to kind of get people who are maybe feeling like that, feeling like they've been rejected enough and they can't take it anymore and they've just given up. Like people get stuck in a nine to five job, it's just like they have that mentality as that, well, this is just the way things are. Like mm-hmm. that's what you're lucky that you get to do that. And it's mm-hmm. a bit funny that you do a podcast and I have to sit in office nine to five mm-hmm. and I hate my job and it's kind of, well, I'm just stuck this way. I, I, I just, I would have liked to do that thing, but there's no opportunity for me. Mm-hmm. I think that's the thing. They've kind of just cut themselves off there. In a way, their brain's trying to protect, protect them. They're right. worried about actually failing. They're worried about what if I do this and it still fails and it just reinforces how right. shit life is. And I think, yeah, I think people need to sort of build in this optimism, which I think comes from who you surround yourself with. It's treating yourself well, it's being healthy. But yeah, I think it's mm-hmm. a really important point to make because I think a lot of people are neglecting life at the expense of that mindset. Uh-huh. So you covered a lot there. I know. You covered a lot there. Ramp bomb. Um, one thing that jumped out at me, which I think is something to really kind of point out to people, you kind of touched on it quite early there, uh, was this idea that really your brain, the human brain, 
Well, in fact, it's not even the human brain. It's animal brains yes. are wired to find patterns and formulas in things. So they're l- wired to look, if this happens, then that then mean, it means this. Yeah. So the idea of, and we actually learned this in philosophy, bringing my A-level philosophy in, Ooh, boom. Bring it back. Um, it's, uh, this idea of uh, empirical evidence. If you see a purple elephant once, you might doubt it. You might be like, did I see <laughs> what I thought I saw? Was it that stuff I was smoking? Yeah, like, what, <laughs> the purple elephants ain't real. Like, we know purple elephants don't. Like, what was that? Yeah. Uh, you see it again, you think, I swear I keep seeing a purple elephant. You see it a third time and you go, pass. shit, there's a purple elephant. And you say, pass me that joint. Purple, <laughs> purple <laughs> elephants are real, right? <laughs> and the more and more something happens, the more and more it's reinforced as mm-hmm. fact in yeah. your mind. And I think the other thing you can also add on there is the idea that actually we're more prone to look at the negative as well. Yeah. So it's so much more... It's initially more work to look at the positive thing, uh-huh. things, but I think over time when you just that become who you are, like every time something goes the wrong, mm-hmm. the video doesn't work, the audio messes up, right. like a brief minute I'm like pissed off, but then two minutes later it's like, well, how can we go about changing that? And I uh-huh. think that's something you build in, but we are right. wired to go straight for the... Well, yeah, if somebody, if somebody get, gave you a table, pros and cons, good and bad columns, and said, right, fill that out and tell me what's good and bad about your job. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. 80% of people yeah. would have more stuff in the bad column than they would in the good column. Mm-hmm. Because if you put st- more stuff in the bad column, you think, maybe this will change. If I, if I complain about it, maybe it will change. Maybe somebody will listen and somebody it will change. Will no me. point in me putting anything in the good column because that's good. That doesn't need to change. Yeah. I want something to change. So let's yeah, put yeah. stuff in the bad column. Um, and whilst, yes... That is probably true. Um, you're also kind of reinforcing this kind of cognitive bias in your mind mm-hmm. that by, by just focusing on the negative stuff, you're kind of going, oh, my job sucks. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you also focus on the positive, you can see a m- much more balanced view and you're not then going to be in this position of like, oh, well, you know, my job just sucks and I just mm-hmm. kind of got to deal with it. I was just thinking on top of my head just now, I guess even evolutionary wise, why we look at the negatives, like you said, there is that there's an opportunity to change there. If something's satisfying, there does not have to be an adaptation. Mm-hmm. Whereas if something feels really shitty, your brain's going, here, that feels shitty. I hope you feel shitty now and maybe you'll do something about it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Rather than, um, rather than you actually, and then, but the problem is people then get stuck and just say, I feel shitty and it disempowers them. Right. And I was actually um, uh, listening or reading something the other day and it was saying, um, this whole idea about like endorphins, like after you've right. exercised, you get this rush of endorphins. And they were saying, actually, it's the brain's way of rewarding you. After you obviously it rewards you after you've had an exercise, you feel like you're buzzing. And then obviously the idea behind that is that you've got away from the tiger, you've ran away, you made it, right? make you feel good. And then next time then that right. bad thing happens, you're going to you're gonna get your that. brain going, you know yeah. what to do. You know what's coming. The reward's coming uh-huh. once you get away. Yeah. But I think what's happened oh, is that... That makes a lot of sense. So whereas the evolution here is that obviously someone will say who's there sitting in their desk and they're really hating their job, that is like your body's survival kicking in and saying, this is shit, this is shit, this is shit. Do, uh, yeah. but, but people don't have then the... I think the bit where people get friction and feel even worse is because they feel that they cannot change that. And I think that's the thing. You need to see where there's opportunity. You can feel like this doesn't work for me, but then if you don't know what to do you don't know the next steps which is kind of why we do the podcast hopefully give people some next steps on how they can change that so yeah i think that's where people get quite stuck really mm-hmm. yeah no that does make total sense about i i love i really love when you're talking about things like this and particularly mindset and 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 stuff like that i really do love kind of deep diving into the evolutionary reasons mm-hmm. for why those things happen and that mm-hmm. makes complete and total sense complete mm-hmm. and total sense yeah, and obviously is you get the rush when something's hard, and that's why as right. well. So it's a difficult thing. And so when you manage to get through, even though it's super difficult, which might mean you finally leave your job and start earning your money mm-hmm. yourself, you get a massive rush. It's so uh-huh. empowering. Whereas I think when people have that, when you're in a job and you literally feel that you cannot change, you are totally right. stuck, right. then suddenly you start beating yourself up or you disempower, you kind of get into that this is life mentality. Yeah. But that this is life mentality, I think that's really if you break it down, that's the survival it's alert system. It's yeah. an alert system right. saying something's up, something's up. Yeah. It's going 
okay, you've done you've done this before, it didn't end well. You've done this again, it didn't end well a second time. <laughs> if you are you're gonna do it again, yeah. be prepared for it to be a little bit of a shitty outcome. So I'm just warning you, says yeah. the brain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just warning you yeah. that every time this happens, this happens. Yeah. And so that's what then makes you go, Oh well, there's no point. Yeah. Um, trying to meet someone new because I get fucked over every time and mm-hmm. they just take me for a ride and treat me like shit because every time your brain's starting to see this pattern. Mm-hmm. But really, what your brain isn't capable of doing, as, as amazing as the brain is, what your brain sometimes isn't capable of doing is looking at the internal variables yeah. and going, well, what am I doing yeah. that's resorting in that? Because what your brain's saying, it's like that reward punishment system mm-hmm. i think it's pavlovian conditioning yeah that's obviously i think is what they refer to it yeah. as yeah. which is this idea of like if you one like when you're training a dog right you're training a dog dog does something bad clip it on the nose or whatever you do right to go no and the dog goes okay i won't do that again after a while yeah. and every time it does something good you give it a treat right and so it goes oh okay if i do that then it means good right and we as humans are wired exactly the same way, right? Yeah, walk into any place where you like the food and I'm pretty sure you'll start salivating. Right. Even now I'm thinking about things I enjoy and I'm salivating. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, me too now, man. <laughs> and it is coming up to lunchtime. Yeah, true. So, like, <laughs> when I think Domino's pizza, I think, yeah, that feels good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and your brain is probably giving off all these chemicals as well that are making you feel like, yes, let's do that. How easy is it to order? How right? Maybe I can do that later. This is this planning. <laughs> that but, is exactly what's going through my head, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I think what you said there is really important is that the idea that the alert goes on and then uh-huh. it's kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. And then I think another point that you made as well is this idea that when you have the that's life fallacy... It, you externalize it it's right. it's not you it's right. everything around you causing everything right. to happen and so you don't actually go and assess yourself and what are you what are your actions you're taking that have caused these patterns to keep going on and on which mm-hmm. then build up your mental models mm-hmm. and then suddenly you just get into that rut of you know what fuck it everything's against me right. whereas that's where you need to kind of learn how to sort of break those patterns mm-hmm. i guess yeah I feel like that might be a good place Yeah, and we'll go for a break and we'll come back to that. And we'll figure out how to break those patterns in the second yes. half. Let's do that. Wicked. Right, back in a mo. So we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, yep. the University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, so why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're we alumni. Went we yes. went there. So everything that we kind of delivered to you kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also... They're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, (laughs) it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Welcome back. Hello. So. Yes. Tough love time. Ready for your second round of battering. <laughs> second round. I think we went fairly easy, actually. Yeah. In the first half. I don't think we're actually battering. We're just no. being gently prodding if yeah. this is the mentality that you have <laughs> not battering just gently prodding your honor <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so we're talking about the that's life fallacy and this whole kind of notion of uh, poor little old me I the would, plum effect the plum effect as you've called it Jim. Very, actually i didn't call it that. oh oh it's from, um, i was totally giving you credit for that it's Who actually it? uh it's either zig ziglar or jim Rohn, and they call okay. it the plum effect okay i and see i thought that was some genius coming from your mind no i must admit i was surprised I should have <laughs> oh but, shots fired <laughs> yeah but, but yeah it's the same sort of thing i think the plum effect is that poor little old me or that's life it's all these words these sort of even the ways we speak to ourselves which is another important point oh yeah it is right. the kind of linguistics that you use to speak to yourself you have a thought you have a, a mind that you we all speak to ourselves in our head and mm-hmm. i think a lot of people that is a constant disempowering negative yeah. stream of thoughts so when you are going out on a night out 
you're dressing up and you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, I look ugly, no one's going to want to talk to me. You get in the club and you're thinking, oh, this is a place of shit, it's full of like waste people, I'm going to have a crap night. And of course, it just comes to fruition night. because you've come out with this negative attitude rather than just uh-huh. kind of going more optimistically and doing it, being around friends and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I do think like it's a really important thing to consider. Like, Are the thoughts, are the ways you speak to yourself in your head really negative? Right. Are they something that you're going to have to work on to start? When it says oh, you're ugly, then you can actually have the conversation back and be like, no, 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 I feel good and I feel... Mm-hmm. You have to be having a... Yeah, it's kind of this sort Who of... Who you, voice in my head? Yeah, and I think everybody has that. You have the two, you say, like, the angel and the devil on your shoulders uh-huh. and stuff. You kind of have to get that in balance. And a lot of the time, most people's is very negative and I think you need people to kind of be able to attack that voice back or at least question that voice as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what is the... Uh, I think there's a little quote slash phrase slash proverb type thing... Uh, which is like, if you talked to your friends the way you talk to yourself, yeah, you'd yeah. probably not have any friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. I think for most people, that's so true. Because uh-huh. you're constantly going, well, that wasn't good enough. Or, well, what are you doing that for? Are you really going to go dressed out yeah. looking like that? And all that sort of stuff, as you say. I think that's a really good point, actually. And I think sometimes looking at it in a perspective, like if you have that, oh, that's life fallacy. What well, if you have like kids or you're going to have kids in the future and your kid wants to do something, are you going to have that attitude with them? Or are you going to try to big them up and say, you know what, you can achieve what you want, you can go out there Mm -hmm. and it's going to be hard work, but you can do it. Whereas people aren't willing to actually speak to themselves that way. Whereas maybe they do for a kid or somebody else. So yeah, I do think it's quite important and quite powerful to actually then speak to yourself in that way. But yeah, I do think that takes a lot of work. Obviously, people might be working through like mental health issues as well, which mm-hmm. makes it a lot tougher. Oh yeah, you know, obviously we're... We're, we're not positive thinking like, oh, if yeah. you just feel that you're doing it, you'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah, this is n- none of that the secret. Uh-huh. Right? Um, if you think hard enough, you will find that parking space. Because I've been thinking and Wayne still hasn't disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, I did fire the first shot, to be fair. So yes, exactly. That is my own fault. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, there comes a limit to how much you can, you know, achieve stuff through pure positive thinking. Yeah. Like, you do have to take action as well. Mm-hmm. But, like... I think thought is this, the actual impetus, though, for right, the action. It right, means... exactly. You, if, you, if you're if you there going, well, there's no point in me doing that because it's not going to amount to anything, then, of course, you're not going to do it, right? Mm-hmm. But if you go, well... If I do this, it could amount to this. The opportunity, the potential of that action mm-hmm. then creates more opportunity. And, yeah, you, you know, you could write to whoever you need to write to to get whatever you need to achieve, for example, done. Mm-hmm. Um, and they might not ever message back. But they might message back. Mm-hmm. And that's the important bit. This is the thing as well. This is a bit where you might need to just give a little bit of a headlock to some people. And you just think, are you just lazy? Are you straight up lazy? Are you afraid of the work? Oh. Oh. Like, are you just, like, you know what? It's easier to say that's life and you can just get on with it and sit on your ass and just, that's it. I think sometimes it's just your, your way of avoiding, like evolving. You're just deciding this will do. Mm-hmm. got to this age now keep the mindset carry on mm-hmm. live the same day out broke don't fix it yeah that kind of mentality except you're complaining that it's broke yeah I mean you're not happy though because you're angry about everything but you're just like well I'm not going to do anything and maybe you are just lazy you don't want to do the hard work you just want to sit back and hope things change without you which because mm-hmm. you're blaming externals anyway so the politics and everything else around you has to change first before you can live that perfect life that mm-hmm. you're hoping will happen to you rather than mm-hmm. you actually going and doing. Right. Are you saying there's no work out there just because you can't be asked to look for a job? Well, because you've let is your that skills your stagnate. Or, right, yeah. Is that is that your scapegoat for not moving forward? Because if it is, then you don't really have much right to say, <laughs> poor little old me, right? Yeah. And, yeah, it's the headlock. The, the real tough love there really is, like... Is it just an excuse for you to not do what's going to push the needle forward? And I completely understand, completely understand if the reason you're doing that is out of fear. I mm-hmm. completely get that. Um, there's research to suggest that we have just as much fear of success as we do of failure because the su- a massive success can significantly change your life, right? Which in your mind goes, oh, no, I don't think I really want that, actually. Yeah. Um, just because it's the reptilian part of your brain going, yeah, but that's unknown and I don't know what that's going to be. And actually, at least if I stay mm-hmm. the status quo effect, at least if I keep everything as it is, mm-hmm. I know what I've let myself in for. Mm-hmm. Um, so I completely, I completely get the fear factor of it. Um, 
but that's where the the positivity can help to at least overcome that fear rather than just using the negativity um to reinforce the negativity it just becomes this continuous loop if mm-hmm. you're on the negative side of going well, that's just life, this sucks, because you're not going to actually m- try to move forward. And then you're just going to then reinforce the fact that this sucks and that's life. And so you're con- going to continue to not do anything and the whole thing's just going to carry on in this infinite loop that yeah. you're going to completely get stuck in. Whereas if you just take the action and just at least give it a go, mm-hmm. you might be surprised. Yeah, and I think you've got to go back to like our human nature is to evolve, is to change. You hope that you're not living the same day in and out every single mm-hmm. day. And so think about it. Like you are naturally inclined. I think as well, I think it's kind of the whole point around this episode, it probably goes back to that, what Gary Vee said uh, as well, is like if your shit ain't broken, then you've, you've won. Like that's mm-hmm. it, you're happy. This is for the people that are kind of like maybe listening in because they actually are feeling like maybe they hate their job or they're not happy so if mm-hmm. that's the kind of person then yeah this is it so it's definitely for you but again if you're just listening in and you're happy and things are going the way you want you're living your life you're getting those experiences you're living holistically to the powerful nonsense manifesto then things oh, are good I like what you did there yeah exactly but um yeah i forgot my point now sorry was that my fault <laughs> no no no. i think my brain just went off on one <laughs> <laughs> okay well look it's a slightly shorter episode than normal it is. But I think we've kind of covered most of what we wanted to cover. Yes. And I'd rather end it there than waffle on just saying the same thing in a different way. Yeah, we'll just do it in different voices and just <laughs> see it out until the end of the episode. <laughs> uh, I'm trying no, to think I, I just think, no, people just need to know that, like, humans, we evolve, we're on a journey. Yeah. It's got to be, we want new experiences, we want to change, we want to evolve, we want to get better in whatever aspects of our lives and obviously that means you can't have that um that's life fallacy kind of mentality because it means you will just stop you will stagnate right. you'll give up you'll be disempowered you don't develop your relationships which is part of your existence mm-hmm. it's that idea that you're just gonna sit like a wallflower and yeah. do nothing with your life whereas we want you to know that you've been blessed you've mm-hmm. been given this life to go out there and and be be as much as you can experience as much as you can and so you can't have that mentality. You need to kind of uh-huh. break through it, whether that means like questioning the patterns of your thinking, whether that means getting around people that are going to push you out of that zone and say, look, just give it a try. You might fail. Who cares? Go mm-hmm. again. You, we all need to develop that constant yeah. optimism that things are going to get better. And also, if nothing else, it really does build up so much integrity and empowerment as well. If you just take ownership of both your successes and your failures, Mm-hmm. If you've if you've made a bad mistake, own it. Mm-hmm. Just own it. People will respect you so much more for it. And ownership of yourself. I think you. Yeah. I think even that, like you say, if you're always blaming the externals, you've kind of just let yourself off the hook. Like mm-hmm. be uh, like hold yourself accountable. Yeah, definitely. So we'll wrap it up there. As I say, a little bit shorter than normal, but I think. Yeah, we didn't want to rant the for the best. Yeah, yeah, for the best. So that's your tough. That, that was just a headlock. You don't want the uppercut. <laughs> <laughs> fighting talk yes. <laughs> uh, so as always please leave those iTunes reviews if you're listening to the podcast mm. five stars or more would be greatly appreciated um, and if you're watching on YouTube hit subscribe and hit that thumbs up Ping. and leave a comment as well let us know has this helped are you are you a plum <laughs> <laughs> are you a plum <laughs> that t-shirt no <laughs> Not a plum. Not a plum. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Okay. Cool. Thanks very much, guys, and we'll catch you next time. See you later. <laughs>